Good evening, everybody. We are continuing our series of replies to this fake Christian, a gentleman who, um, in the beginning, I had uh, given him the benefit of the doubt. And as we've gone forward looking at his videos and deconstructing them and replying to them, we've come to the conclusion the man is a fraud, the man is a liar. Uh, he's most likely in it for the money. He is a complete liar. He has said multiple times that he will come onto my show and uh, and debate me on Christian church history. The man is a fraud. He will never show up. Don't ever expect it. We've busted him. We've replied to his videos, and it's, they're not even good. I mean, not even to the point where we can say he pre presents compelling arguments. He doesn't. He's regurgitating stuff that we've re refuted long back. He never. He does not provide anything new. He is woefully ignorant on church history. He's ignorant in the Bible. So you may be wondering, why are you even dealing with him? Number one, he has a big channel. He doesn't have any erudite or any uh, intellectuals that follow the channel or promote him. But either which way, he needs to be dealt with. By virtue of the fact that our videos get thousands of views, thanks be to God, and uh, Thanks to the Facebook, the YouTube algorithm, they will come out as options for people when they see this fraud, this liar, they'll see that we've done replies to them, they'll watch them, people that are, don't know much about the faith, and they'll realize this man is a liar when they realize how we're ripping the arguments apart. Now, <clears throat> we were told in the beginning that this man is a, a, former, a, a former seminarian. The man has never been a seminarian. I don't care if he produces a piece of paper. The man is a liar. The man is a fraud. Uh, he has no evidence of him ever having been a practicing Christian. And the statements he makes are baffling, bafflingly bad. He believes that, uh, that Christians believe that Jesus Christ is the Father come incarnate. That is buffoonery. That is uh, the height of being a fraud. And uh, we'll play a little clip of him, and then we'll hear the rest of what he says about Justin the Martyr, Pope Gregory, and then we'll look at another video. We're going to go piece by piece refuting him. It probably won't even take an hour. He has really, really bad arguments. But, you know, we, I want you all to hear the buffoonery um, because this is evidence that the man knows nothing about the faith. He is a fraud and he pretends to be a Christian that is shocked at Islam. He's, an, he's a Muslim. He's been a Muslim from the beginning. He's doing it for views. He's doing it for money. Do not be tricked by this liar. Time. So that idea that Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ is not true. The book of the Bible has proven beyond reasonable doubt that... This, if, if you needed any more evidence that this man is a fraud, you've got it right here for you. You need no more evidence. You can continue watching, which we recommend you do, but you need no more evidence. You don't need anything else. This man is a liar. This man is a fraud, and he deserves no attention. We're going to finish with him. We're going to refute him here on early church history, do another show replying to him on the violence of the Bible, and then we're going to be done with this fraud because the man is a liar, and there are better arguments to be dealt with. When you don't even know passages of the Bible, you don't even know early church history. There's a clear problem with your methodology. You need to retire. Our advice for open-minded Muslim is to retire. Stop lying to people. People are going to figure you out. The more and more videos we do, you're going to be buried alive under people going and downvoting you and people sharing the fact that you are a liar and that you are a fraud, which is what you are. Jesus Christ is an autonomous being from, you know, God. Jesus and uh, God are equal, and the one Christianity is not being honest. Remember when? Remember when all this uh, idea of Jesus Christ being God, you know, emanated? Christianity was looking for a way to evangelize people, especially the Greek and the Romans. And they needed to, you know, 
teach the Romans in the language they understand. And that's the reason why he's writing as far back as the second century, Justin the Martyr wrote to the Greeks that the Jesus we're talking about is just like your Jupiter, you know, trying to equate Jesus with a pagan god. You know, so it's a strategy by God. Even even the problem with this is that Justin the Martyr was drawing parallels. And then what he does is he follows it up by telling them, our God is the true, the one true God. Our God truly did bodily resurrect. Justin the Martyr draws parallels and then, drew, and then calls the pagans, calls the Jews to conversion to Christ. So there's no parallelism there. The problem with open-minded Muslim is that we've got apostolic fathers. Justin the Martyr is not an apostolic father. We've got apostolic fathers that predate him. The talk about Christ is being God. And you don't have these people sat down in front of Roman delegates. You have these people on the run for their lives. They are being martyred and murdered. The great St. Ignatius of Antioch, the great St. Polycarp of Smyrna, the great St. Clement of Rome, and the list can go on and on. Apostolic fathers, as we know, Polycarp, St. Polycarp, well acquainted, taught and trained by the Apostle John, he would in turn teach and train the great St. Irenaeus. So we've got the biblical evidence, which we've laid out to you. And we've also laid out the patristic evidence. When will you learn? Now you will follow this up by misrepresenting Pope Gregory, but let's hear it. Uh, uh, Pope Gregory the Great, when he sent someone to Britain to, you know, evangelize them, he told them, remove the images in some of their temples and replace them with images of saints. The same thing Paul did with Barnabas when they got to a The problem with what he's attempting to do, he's attempting to say that uh, Christianity was paganized. Here's a problem with this hilarious argument. When Pope Gregory did that, Pope Gregory was having images removed because they were adoring them. If you look at the Latin, the Latin is indicative of they were giving them latrevo, latria, latruo. They were giving them worship. You should not give worship to any image. And thus, they were ordered to be removed because they were giving them worship. Images from the beginning in Judaism existed. How on earth are you claiming that the Christian faith attempted to paganize, to identify with the pagans? So they paganized themselves. They adopted pagan customs. If we look in the book of Ezekiel, and images already existed. Images existed on the very Ark of the Covenant, the beautiful symbol that the Jews identified themselves with. You don't know Judaism, you don't know Christianity, and you don't know early Christian history. My advice to you is to retire, because you've been exposed as a fraud, there's no coming back. The only way you could come back is if you showed up to debate me, which you said you would, but you wouldn't do it in a million years, because your heresy would be crushed. Or show up and debate Sam, which you wouldn't do in a million years, because you'd show up and you'd be taken to school. You will never, ever debate anyone, even semi-knowledgeable, because you know you are a Muslim fraud. You know you are a liar, and you know that you your time is up when it comes to deceiving people. Look at the bottom. People that are actually intellectual follow our channel. People that actually know the Bible. People that know how to read Greek. People that know the early church fathers. People that are laughing at you. And I don't tell you that with joy. I sincerely feel sorrow for you in my heart because you are doing this out of dishonesty. And the time has come to pay the piper. And we're here, we're here to collect. And the collection is gonna be the destruction of your arguments and the exposure of you as a fraud. You're a fraud, man. And you know that you're a fraud. You will never in a million years ever debate anyone. You're gonna continue putting out videos, putting out little fun little, little images that have you on one side, says verses and have another person the other. You'll never debate anyone because you know better, because you know if you even dare do it, you would get ravaged. Your arguments would get ravaged. Let us move on. We're now going to look at the other video he did. And as you all notice, uh, I'm doing this and without my brother in arms, but we'll be doing many more sessions together. This one, particularly, I'm doing it because um, this uh, 
uh, open-minded Muslim is, is uh, going at early church history, which he doesn't know a thing about early church history. Um, he knows nothing about it. He doesn't know much about anything, really, when it comes to the faith. But we're going to dig in. We're going to see, does he have any, any decent arguments? Look, there's not going to surprise you, but I'm going to be honest with you. There's nothing here. Nothing. His arguments are very, very poor, but we're going to dig in. Jamonian and Mr. William. It was an epic showdown between yours fitfully and these two Christian YouTube. There was no epic showdown. Don't lie to your audience. Don't ever put a, uh, a thumbnail showing you versus one of us. It's not going to happen. Look, you know better. If you ever do try and debate us, your arguments are going to be shredded. You know better. And I think you know that because much better Muslim apologists have debated us and their arguments have been shredded. I, I think you know better because you know much less than the Muslim scholars we've debated. You know much, much less. And you don't even know 1% of the scholars, the knowledge of the scholars that we've debated. You need to retire. I'm being very kind with you. You need to stop because you're deceiving people and the time is up. It's over already. Was, well, uh, Shimonian and uh, Williams, great gentlemen, I must acknowledge that these guys are intelligent, but they're essentially deceptive and unscrupulously uh, dishonest. We are deceptive. One moment. That idea that Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ is not true. The idea that Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ is not true. The idea that Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ. The idea that Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ. The idea that if anybody is dishonest, it is you. If anybody is a fake, it is you. If anybody is a liar, it is you. You are ignorant, yet you pretend to know about the Christian faith. You are a liar, yet you pretend to have been a seminarian. You need to stop. They have refused to tell the followers the real truth about the inconsistencies in the Christian faith. So I desire that they should be humble when it comes to talking about uh, inconsistencies <laughs> in other faith. Do you want to talk about the killings in the Bible, the dark histories of the church division in Christendom, the deliberate adaptation of the Christian faith to suit ancient paganism? Come on, these gentlemen honestly has no genuine arguments beyond emotional generalization and outright intellectual mischievousness. Intellectual mischievousness. Yet we have broken down the Greek, we have shown you commentaries, and we've shown you tons of early church fathers, and you've refuted none of it. Not only have you refuted none of it, you haven't come on to school me on early church history like you said you were going to do. Mm. If I was mean, I would call you intellectually mischievous, but I don't think you're intellectual at all. I watched as they advanced the theological premises on the question of the divinity of Jesus Christ in the last video. I watched every bit of that video. It was over one, uh, I think, one hour, 30 minutes. And that sounded so ordinary and whether the facts with complete philosophical generalization, a very faulty foundation that immediately revealed their lies. Yeah. We utilize biblical Greek. We utilize biblical Hebrew. We utilize the early church fathers, early commentaries to show that this was a unanimous belief of the early church. Yet you call that philosophy? Um. I've got to be very quite honest with you. You don't know how to do apologetics. The idea of you being able to do apologetics is laughable. You're unable to do it. But if you think that we are liars, join us. 
come join the stream. In fact, if you want to just dialogue with one of us, join and you can tell us, hey, I want to dialogue with William alone, or hey, I want to dialogue with Sam alone, and we will honor that. The invitation is open. The Zoom is open for anyone to join week in and week out. The invitation remains open for you. Something tells me you won't be showing up anytime soon. Yes, when they were talking, you would actually glean that they were not being honest. <laughs> now, if I understood... Well, what he's doing is he's, 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 um, his back is up against the wall. So he is now adopting the same language we're using because we pointed out that he's a fraud and he's a liar. The only difference is, is that when we point out that he's a fraud and a liar, we document it. Idea that Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ is not true. This man is a liar, this man is a fraud, and this man is a buffoon. He does not deserve your time. We are here refuting him because he has a large following. We don't think his arguments are worthy of being refuted because all he does is repeat everything we've dealt with before in the past. Yet, we will continue to dig in. This gentleman very well. They meant to use that Jesus was both man and God. That's very problematic. So was Jesus a man bearing God or God bearing man? Because these extreme poles may actually lay a number of other asses who competed furiously through the first Christian centuries. But if in with the arguments, Christians like you know, Shamonian. Uh, I want to be very clear that the only competing arguments to what we've put forth are heresies. We subscribe to the faith of Nicaea. We subscribe to Constantinople, to Chalcedon, to Ephesus. Thus, we are in the mindset of the early church. That church that can be traced right back to the apostolic era, right back to Christ. We adopt that, those creeds, and we adopt the teaching of that church. The other teachings were dubbed heresies, and you're going to notice this man is going to try and defend Arius much to what will be his disappointment. I want to remind the audience that this gentleman knows nothing of the Trinitarian faith. He also accuses us of, uh, of putting forth Sabellianism, which in essence is belief in, uh, in, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit being present in different modes. The problem is, is in every session we've done, we have presented the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as distinct persons. We have shown them to share the one essence, and we have shown that they are distinct from one another. There is no Sabalianism we put forth. He doesn't even know what Sabalianism is. Do not forget, this is the very same man that believes that Christianity taught that the Father came incarnate, came in the flesh. The Father went into the womb of Mary and became incarnate for us. Remember, anything you hear from this man is buffoonery at the highest level. Do not forget that. And Williams, who has set the basic concept, you know, probably could not explain to me in the precision that you know, early Christian councils would actually demand about how Jesus Christ is both God and but may he do it. I teach Christology every week to a wonderful group of people that follow me on YouTube. I teach Mariology every week. I have done tons of shows with some of the top Christologists in the world. Um, some of the top Christologists in the world have endorsed the books that we've put forth. So the idea that I would not be able to put forth the Trinitarian teaching, considering I've debated your top scholars in that very issue, it's a little bit laughable. But hey, how about you join our sessions and you put us to the test, hold our feet to the fire, and we will see if we're able to show you the deity of Christ from scripture. We've done it probably 20 or more times. You're invited to join us. You're very welcome to join us in one of our sessions so that we can take you to school and you can learn.
just ranting now for the purpose of this video i would love to advance uh, the arguments of areas you know first to drive home a valid point for clarity purpose i am not in any way in support of the position of this you know third century syriaca what we are going to do now is we are going to go back to back and hear what a fraud this man is. I've corrected him over and over. First, I had to correct him that Arius did not live in the time of Irenaeus, which would have been the second century. I told him multiple times when Arius lived, and now he continues to use a ridiculous argument of not even knowing anything about Arianism. Arius was not third century. Arius was not third century. How many times do we have to tell him that he knows nothing about early church history. Hear this silliness again. This, you know, third century Syriaca, presbyter and ascetic. And of course that should come as no surprise to you when this is the very same theology espoused by this man. Dear that Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ is not true. That idea that He is a priest, but known for the doctrine of um, Arianism. I'm only interested in his argument, which for me, just like in the mind of the great, you know, origin, is essential for the purposes of um, this video. Arius emphasized God the Father's uniqueness and Christ's subordination under the Father, a position I had maintained in all my works, but Williams and Shamonia. You do not believe what Arius taught because Arius still held to a partial kind of divinity of Christ's son. Very erroneous, but he still held that the fact that the son, a lot of the privileges that the son took a part in would be abominations in Islam. You do not hold to what Arianism held to. You do not hold to what Paul of Samosada held to. And you don't hold to what Lucian of Antioch held to. You don't know early church history. You've got to stop. This is becoming embarrassing by the minute. Where patrons of Sabiolism, in fact, they have fallen into the heresy because of their blindness to the truth. What does Sabiolism teach? Principal error, the denial that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are separate persons of the Godhead. The claim instead that they are modes, aspects, energies, phases, or offices of a single divine person. Here is this buffoonery put forth by open-minded Muslim. The fact that every video we do, every class that we do, every session we do, we emphasize the fact that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are distinct persons. We emphasize it over and over. We've debated the issue. We've given hundreds of classes on the very issue. Yet he argues that we're teaching Sabellianism. Don't forget, this is the very same man that believes that the Bible teaches that the Father came incarnate, that the Father came in the womb of the Virgin Mary, became incarnate for our sake. This is ridiculous. And yet he continues with these horrific arguments. This is why I tell you, we cannot take any of the arguments this gentleman has put forth seriously, any of them. The truth that if the father begot the son, he that was begotten had a beginning of existence. And from this, it is evident that there was a time when the son was not it therefore necessarily follows that the son had his substance from nothing. I hope you understand what I mean. Now, in fact, he was the firstborn of all creation. But to actually prove that, let's read the book of Colossians 1, verse 15 to 17. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. If you read from verse 16, say, For by him all things were created. Notice how he's going to begin to read Colossians and notice how Colossians refutes 
what Arius is putting forth. And he recognizes that, yet he sides with Arius. Can you believe that? Can you believe that this gentleman will read Colossians, recognize that it refutes Arianism, but he's going to side with a ridiculous reading of begotten from the arch heretic Arius? In heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authority, all things were created through him and for him. And finally, if you read from verse 17, it says, And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. I know that we'll quickly dismiss this, but help me consider the fact that Arius himself was influenced by the writings of we're going to deal with begotten because we've dealt with that we've done sessions on what begotten means and we've done sessions on what the fathers mean by begotten i am glad that he recognizes colossians goes contrary it goes contra to what arius is putting forth but how do the early fathers view that particular teaching how do the early fathers view begotten eternally begotten of the Father. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. We want to look at begotten. We've done sessions on it before. We'll briefly look at what are the earliest followers of the faith believe that meant the great St. Ignatius of Antioch, writing at an incredibly early time, probably 105. He, Christ, being begotten by the Father before the beginning of time, was God the Word, the only begotten Son, and remains the same forever. For of his kingdom there shall be no end, says Daniel the prophet. Can a good Muslim affirm what Ignatius of Antioch, St. Ignatius, is saying here? No, a good Muslim cannot. This is your great problem. You recognize that Colossians runs contrary to what Arius is saying, yet you side with Arius, yet you don't side with any of the apostolic fathers who are in line with what scripture says when they provide the interpretation, the ancient interpretation of what begotten means. We go forward. I shall give you another testimony, my friends, said I, from the scriptures that God begat before all creatures, a beginning, who was a certain rational power proceeding from himself, who was called by the Holy Spirit, now the glory of the Lord, now the Son, again wisdom, again an angel, then God, and then Lord and Logos, and on another occasion he calls himself captain, when he appeared in human form to Joshua, the son of Nay. For he can be called by all those names, since he ministers to the Father's will, and since he was begotten of the Father by an act of will, just as we see happening among ourselves. For when we give out some word, we beget the word, yet not by abscission, so as to lessen the word, which remains in us. When we give it out, and just as we see also happening in the case of a fire, catch this, this is the eternal generation of the sun, which is not lessened when it has kindled another, but remains the same. And that which has been kindled by it likewise appears to exist by itself, not diminishing that, from which it was kindled. The word of wisdom, who is himself this God, begotten of the Father of all things, and Logos, and wisdom, and power, and the glory of the begetter, will bear evidence to me when he speaks by Solomon the following. If I shall declare to you what happens daily, I shall call to mind events from everlasting <laughs> and review them. The Lord made me the beginning of his ways for his works. From everlasting, he established me in the beginning. Before he had made the earth, and before he had made the deeps, before the springs of the waters had issued forth, before the mountains had been established, before all the hills he begets me, God made the country and the desert and the highest inhabited places under the sky. When he made ready the heavens, I was along with him. And when he set up his throne on the winds, when he made the high clouds strong and the springs of the deep safe, when he made the foundations of the earth, I was with him arranging. I was that in which he rejoiced. Daily and at all times, I delighted in his countenance because he delighted in the finishing of the habitable world and delighted in the sons of men. That's dialogue of Justin, Justin the martyr. What about Theophilus of Antioch? 
right in around 100, between 110 and 170. You will say then to me, you said that God ought not to be contained in a place. And how do you now say that he walked in paradise? Hear what I said. The God and Father, indeed, of all cannot be contained and is not found in a place, for there is no place of his rest but his word, through whom he made all things, being his power and his wisdom, assuming the person of the Father and Lord of all, went to the garden in the person of God and conversed with Adam. For the divine writing itself teaches us that Adam said that he had heard the voice, but what else is this voice but the word of God, who is also his son? distinct persons, not as the poets and writers of myths talk of the sons of gods, but God from intercourse, so he is not from intercourse with women, but as truth expounds, the word that always exists, that's what begotten means, the word that always exists, residing within the heart of God, for before anything came into being, he had him as a counselor, being his own mind and thought, but when God wished to make all that he determined on, he begot his word, uttered the firstborn of all creation, not himself being emptied of the word, but having begotten reason and always conversing with his reason. And hence the holy writings teach us and the always spirit bearing men inspired. One of whom John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, showing that at first God was alone and the word in him. Then he says, the word was God. All things came into existence through him. So God was with the word. God was with the word in the beginning. The word was God. All things came into existence through him. And apart from him, not one thing came into existence. The word then, being God, the logos, being theos, and being naturally produced from theos. Whenever the father of the universe wills, he sends him to any place. And he, coming, is both heard and seen, being sent by him, and is found in a place. We go onward. Let's skip forward to Let's go to the great Eunesius. There certainly was not a time when God was not the father, neither. Indeed, as though he had not brought forth these things, did God afterwards beget the son? But because the son has existence, not from himself, but from the father. And after a few words, he says of the son, being the brightness of the eternal light, the brightness of the eternal light, he himself is absolutely eternal. He is absolutely eternal. Look at the kind of language utilized here. We can go on and on and on. This is Dionysius. We can even look at Marcellus. But following the Holy Scriptures, I believe that there is one God and his only begotten son, or Lagos, whoever exists with the Father and has never in any sense had a beginning of existence, truly having his being from God, not created, not made, but ever being with, ever reigning with God and the Father. We can go on and on, which we've done before in other sessions, to show that the reading of begotten by Arius was a novelty. Arius was indeed incorrect. And the idea that open-minded Muslim is hearkening to Arius is an embarrassment, but we're not shocked. He would definitely hearken to anyone that hates our Lord and Savior, because he does hate Christ. He is angry, filled with anger at the fact that the brother and Sam and myself have crushed his heresy. We've crushed the arguments he's put forth. So he's scrambling. He is mad. He's now resorting to defending Arius, to defending Arianism. And he's about to try and defend Lucy and Antioch as well. Let's go forward. Hear this mockery of the uh, of the faith of Lucian of Antioch, a celebrated Christian writer, and of course a martyr. Did you know that church authority at that time didn't condemn or excommunicate Arius before the first ecumenical council of Nicaea? The idea that I would get my early church history from a man who believes that Arius first lived in the 100s and then argue that he lived in the 200s would be laughable. I would never get an ounce of early church history from this fraud. And we know why. 318 in Egypt, in an informal discussion on the Trinity between Bishop Alexander and his presbyters, 
Arius accuses Alexander of Sabellianism. He goes on to frame his adoptionist views following the theology of Lucian of Antioch. Afterwards, Alexander of Alexandria convenes a council, convenes a council that condemns and exiles Arius. Arius then writes his letter to Sabius of Nicomedia, in which he complains of being unjustly persecuted. The letter mentions that Eusebius of Caesarea and many other Eastern bishops have also been condemned. Hmm. So we've got a letter from around 318 where Arius notes that they've been condemned. The Council of Nicaea would have, been, would have taken place a few years later in the 320s, not in 318. Arius was condemned before that. Arius then traveled to Nicomedia at the invitation of Eusebius, after which Eusebius advances a letter writing a campaign to the bishops of Asia Minor in support of Arius. Due to his rigorous support of Arius, Eusebius transforms what, have, what might have remained an Egyptian dispute into an ecumenical controversy. You catch that? It becomes an ecumenical controversy, as Quaston points forth. Now, why would he point that out? Because early church history, if you go into the Patrologia, the Grece, or the Latina, or any other ancient source that preserves these documents in their original languages, which open-minded Muslim has no ability to do, because he doesn't know how to read any of the original languages, and because he's a liar and a fraud. When you go and you look at that, you've got the evidence there. In, indeed, this is elementary knowledge, that he was condemned before the council. And Eusebius himself, uh, in the letter, uh, Arius notes in the letter, and Eusebius' letters note that they were condemned. Their letters indicate it. The letter to Eusebius predates the Council of Nicaea. But I don't expect the man who thinks that St. Irenaeus wrote his against heresies to Arius to know any of these details. You, my friend, are a fraud. You, my friend, are a liar. And we're not done dealing with you. Come on, give me a break, Shamoni. Give me a break. I'm going to give you a break. Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ is not true. The book idea that Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ is not true. The idea that Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ is not true. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Did you know that a bishop as learned as a patriarch of Alexander of Constantinople was reluctant to act? <laughs> Did you also know? He condemned him. Doesn't really look like he was reluctant to me, does it? That until the 7th century, Arianism was paramount or practiced in different parts of Germany and other parts of Europe until wars were levied by tr Trinitarians or the people who had the faith. Open-minded Muslim. Arianism is still alive to this day. What are you talking about? Arianism was refuted and it was crushed multiple times in the fourth century and onward, multiple times, but it didn't die out. We have a form of Arianism, just a dumbed down one in Islam. We have a form of Arianism in the Jehovah's Witnesses. Arianism is alive and well. So the idea that because Arianism as a condemned heresy continued to live on, uh, the idea that that is a reality, what does that do? Does that disprove the Trinitarian faith? So then we can argue that any heresy, once it's been refuted, that continues to live on, is a stain or a black mark on orthodoxy, right? This kind of logic is problematic. And well, to be quite honest, this kind of logic is, is, is in line with this gentleman who believes that God the Father came in the flesh in the womb of the Blessed Virgin. For them to submit, and they did submit. Well, maybe you gentlemen don't know about that. Yeah, we, we, we need to be educated. Give me one moment, though. 
is another area where we need to be educated on. Idea that Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ is not true. Idea. I have a little advice for this man. Please be humble and always acknowledge that the fact that um, Christianity isn't as clean as you think. Even the Bible, you rush, you always, uh, you know, make your points clear, is riddled with confusion and contradictions. The Catholic Church itself does not see the Bible as the only arbiter of uh, truth. The role of tradition and uh, magisterium have not been ditched away. So and they never will be ditched away because the Bible is very clear. The word of God, written and unwritten, is what is divine. That is what is divine. That is the word of God. The Bible is clear. The word of God is not relegated to the scripture alone. Here is your problem. The idea that you don't know this and you claim to have been a seminarian is shocking. The idea that you don't know the basic fundamentals of the Christian faith is what is shocking, and you don't know them. You've made a farce. Each video you make is an embarrassment to you. Each video you do is shockingly bad. But don't worry. We know that you've challenged us on the Old Testament now. You have said that the violence done by Muhammad is perfectly fine. Now, you justify that by saying the Old Testament is violent. Well, open-minded Muslim, we're coming for those arguments as well. And I tell you one thing, by the time we're done refuting you, you will not want to ever watch another video of ours. Because, my friend, you are not on a journey to Islam. You are a Muslim through and through. And I promise you, there's not a living person that watches our channels, that thinks you are a Christian. I want you to go to the comments and look at them. They know you're a fraud. They know you're a liar. And we have shredded your arguments from your idea, from you not even knowing what Chalcedon taught, not even knowing who Pope Leo was, not even knowing about Constantinople or Nicaea, from your idea of not even knowing when, uh, who Irenaeus was writing to, thinking he wrote to Arius thinking Arius lived in the 100s and then the 200s, and then thinking that the father came incarnate? My friend, hang it up. You need to quit. This is pathetic. This is an embarrassment. And I want to end the video by reminding the audience, pray for me and Sam. And I tell you that pray for us to remain humble because we're not doing this video, these videos to brag. We're doing these videos to bring people out of the darkness of Islam. And if people are following this guy, is this guy an example of scholarship? This man is an embarrassment and a fraud. And I will leave you with these words to hear them. And I want you to be appalled one last time as we wrap up this video, because this man is an absolute disgrace. And I say that because you must repent and you must pray for him. Please pray for him. Ask our triune God to guide him to all truth. This is ridiculous. One and the same. So that idea that Jesus himself is God the Father coming in the form of Jesus Christ is not true. We will conclude today with a thorough refutation and schooling of him on early church history. The invitation remains open. You think you can come and crush me in early church history? I dare you to. The Zoom link is open week in and week out. Come, debate me, or join me in a private session. We don't have to go live. Come and dialogue with me in private. I can promise you, you will never do it. And do not, do not lie. Not on my channel. Go on your channel and be a liar and a fraud. Do not come here and tell people that you want to be treated as a Christian on a journey to Islam because you are 100% Muslim and you have been your whole life. You, my friend, the only thing I'm not sure of is how long you've been a fraud and a liar for. But I know that you are a fraud and a liar. And we're here to crush your heresies 
and to defend our Trinitarian faith. And that will not end. May the Father, Son, Holy Spirit.